Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church on this Palm Sunday 2024. I want to invite you all to move out into the courtyard for the blessing of palms and uh, the beginning of the liturgy. Denise, I'm expecting you to stay here and you'll be able to hear everything uh, because we'll have a microphone outside. To our friends who are gathering online, uh, you too will be able to hear all the service uh, from its inception in the courtyard here at St George's. Uh, you'll find the Pew Bulletin on the parish um, website and through the link on YouTube and Facebook. Our prayers, best wishes and blessings to you wherever you may be and, uh, uh, and to Carolyn and her family in Sydney in particular, our heartfelt prayers to you at this time. Thank you. Friends, as we gather here in the courtyard at St. George's Anglican Church, our liturgy begins here and, uh, and we'll then process into the church. The choir, the service and myself will process around the church and you'll be invited to take uh, your seats. Thank you, Roger. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. This morning begins the great week of the Christian year. During Lent we've been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of the Lord's death and resurrection. With Christians throughout the world we come together this week to call to mind and to express in word and action the center of the Easter mystery, our Lord's Passover from death to life. Christ entered in triumph into the holy city to complete his work as Messiah, to suffer, to die, and to rise to new life. Today we commit ourselves to walk the way of the cross, so that sharing his sufferings, 
we may be united with him in his risen life. Let us pray. Sovereign God, we thank you for these branches and crosses of palm. By your blessing may they be for us signs of the victory of your Son. May we who carry them in his name ever hail him as our Messiah and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When they were age and that has never been written. send it back here. I'm sitting in here too. I'm not going to walk around. In the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the coat? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead, those who followed, were shout, Hosanna! One who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of the ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Friends, our processional form up led by the service, followed by the choir, followed by the congregation, and then myself will begin to sing at what we were assembled in the entry to church. Thank you.
verses recorded in the letter to the people of Philippi. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Strengthen us by your Spirit to love and obey you in newness of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of all, you gave your only begotten Son to take the form of a servant and to be obedient even to death on a cross. Give us the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, that sharing in his humility we may come to be with him in his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn back. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you.
reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. So the crowd came and began to ask him to do 
chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests, they stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. And so Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they shouted back, Crucify! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole court. And they clothed him in a purple cloth, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled the passerby who was coming in from the country carrying his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taught him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lema Sabachthan, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for a light. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his life.
May I speak in the name of the Son, in the power of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Holy Week begins right now. It's said the most important week of the year for Christians. The week when, according to the former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, we discover in a way we don't at any other time just who we are and just who God is. A story. I foreshadowed uh, some time ago that 2024 is a year of anniversaries. 30 years ago and five weeks, I arrived in this land, intending only stay for two. Still here, still counting. 20 years ago, I was deaconed. Later in the year, 20 years of priesthood. But 50 years ago last year, I was a small boy growing up in the northeast of England, in the land of the Prince Bishops, known as County Durham. And in May 51 years ago, our little football team, Sunderland, had defeated the mighty Leeds United from the top of the first division in the FA Cup final. 1-0, Ian Porterfield, 31st minute. Second half, Jimmy Montgomery, the save of the century for the FA Cup final. The team was to return home, triumphant. My parents, bless them, said to my sister and I, would you like to go and see and be a witness to this occasion? We were thrilled. Our rosettes, which we'd made at school, and our scarfs adorned us. The thought of being able to stay up late in the evening was a great thrill. And so we journeyed to Sunderland, and my father sat me on a brick parapet above the shops in the center of town near the station, and we waited. They predicted it would take about an hour for the bus opened one of those open top buses to drive through town. And we waited and we waited and we waited and the crowds gathered and they swelled and they gathered and became even tighter. I'd never seen so many people in all my life. All the way down the road to the right, in front of us, around the corner, 10, 15, 20 deep on the pavements. And eventually, after quite some time, the coach arrived. Its arrival was heralded by a wave of applause and cheers that rippled up the road towards us. And so that team, atop the coach with the trophy, came in front of us and we cheered and cheered and clapped and cheered and we watched it go around the corner and I hung over the edge trying to see it past the station as they came back once more past Bin's department store. Six hours, I think it took, for that coach to make the journey to the stadium, which was full, where the masses awaited them. Back then, the people of the northeast of England had fuller employment than they do in more recent decades. The coal mines were still open and they produced coal for the steelworks and the furnaces which produced steel for the shipyards which still constructed mighty ships on the Tyne, the Weir and the Tees. Now soccer, as you call it here, is seen as a working class sport. But the crowds were so dense that night 
that surely there were teachers and academics and nurses and doctors, every star strata of English society present to witness that event. And so why do I share that story with you? Well, dear friends, we need to gain a sense of the enormity of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Dare I say it, a town a little like Sunderland, a time, a town of working people, a town of craftsmen. And just as they gathered on that night 51 years ago, so all stratas of society were present when that little man on his donkey rode through his town, his city. And just as we sang for our team, so his people sang and cried Hosanna for him. Now we all know sports fans can become fickle and fall off. We know from the story as recorded in the Gospel of Mark that people fell off rather quickly from Christ and his entrance to Jerusalem. Mark, the editor of this gospel readings we've heard this day, is a master of brevity and accuracy. The characters, the places, each and every one serves a purpose. The story sends an invitation to us. There was one question for Mark in his version of these events. Who is Jesus of Nazareth? That is the question he posed to the people of his time. And it is a timeless question for the world to this day. Who is Jesus of Nazareth? And so he groups the participants in the story into three groups for us to ponder. There are those who are against Jesus, either directly, the Romans, the Pharisees, or desertion, his friends who abandoned him in the days that followed. Then there are the characters of great virtue. Great virtue like the woman who recognizes Jesus before his death, and she answers that question, who is Jesus of Nazareth, for herself, and she truly anoints him. Then there is Simon of Cyrene, who also recognizes Jesus, but who, unlike Simon Peter, who had been taught by Jesus, he literally takes up the cross that ultimate symbol of destruction and death and oppression, a method of torture and death saved for the lowest of the low, he takes it up and carries it. And finally, the third in this trinity of characters of great virtue, the centurion, the symbol of Roman imperial power. Who, if you remember from the story, without hearing a single word from Jesus and without seeing anything he has done, but in his dying recognizes who he is and states in those immortal and powerful words, truly this man was God's son. All three characters of shining example and virtue, the woman, Simon, and the Roman centurion are models and encouragers for each one of us who listen to the story this day, for us who read and reflect on the turbulent events of Holy Week 
as we sit and reflect upon whom, with whom we might identify from these three groups of characters. Do we denounce or desert? Are we people of virtue? For ultimately, we are called to answer this question. Who is Jesus of Nazareth? And so to the man himself. Having arrived triumphantly, as we said, in his home city of Jerusalem, albeit on a donkey, he moves through the story in ever-deepening isolation along the way, which he must tread. From the Garden of Gethsemane, where he leaves the twelve with the three, and then forward finally alone. From his moment of arrest, he is without support, and in the very end, knows even desertion by God. The isolation of Jesus is matched by the ever-deepening silence as Jesus is handed over by Judas to the soldiers and by them to Pilate and by him to the executioners. In the end, this story is a great invitation. A great invitation to journey through this turbulent week, to sit and reflect and decide who we are and where we are. As the American theologian Fleming Rutledge has said in recent days, and I quote, nothing I think, nothing I think, I mean that literally, compares with Holy Week to ground the Christian. Faithful attendance each day at some sort of gathering, however simple, however poorly attended, will make it work. Each day with its appointed readings is a dose of unfiltered gospel." End of quote. So may we, on our journey this week, respond to this timeless invitation, this personal journey and communal journey of discovery, where we might recognize the presence of God in the world, and like the centurion say, truly this man was God's son. Let us stand and together affirm the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God.
resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church and thank God for his goodness in our lives. Let us pray for the preservation of the earth. We give thanks for the beauty and abundance of the earth. Give us and all peoples grace to live in harmony with your creation, wisdom and generosity in our use of its bounty. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for peace and shared prosperity. We give thanks for leaders who serve the common good. Give wisdom to those who have responsibility and authority in every land, that we may share with justice the resources of the world and work together in trust. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for our nation, this Commonwealth of Australia. We give thanks for this land and the diversity of its peoples. Grant that we may so honor one another that all may be enriched by our common heritage and freed from despair, poverty, and exclusion. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, we pray now for those places racked by war, terror, and division thinking particularly this day of the people of Russia and all who have died or been injured in that terrorist atrocity in the last 24 hours. May those who grieve know your hope and your presence. And may the people of Israel, Palestine and the Holy Land, of Yemen and all places racked by war and terror, know peace this day. May those in leadership in those lands know that the paths of peace are before them. May they have their eyes open to these paths and refrain from violence and all these lands, remembering also the people of Ukraine. We ask all this in union with Christ and trusting in the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, we pray for those in need. Remembering Catherine, Princess of Wales, her family, her children, her friends and neighbors, and all who were afflicted by the disease of cancer. May they, like her, draw courage from faith, from your presence. May they know healing and peace in their lives. And so we give thanks that you are the God who brings mercy and wholeness. Comfort and heal, we pray, all who are in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other trouble. Give to those who care for them wisdom, patience, and gentleness, and to us all your peace. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the faithful departed and remember with love and affection those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time. We give thanks. We give you thanks for your servants in every age. Grant that we, with all your saints, may be brought to a joyful resurrection and the fulfillment of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, 
but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same, Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us.
invitation to our guests. All are welcome to receive the sacrament in this church, should their conscience so permit. If you would prefer to receive a blessing, just let me know as I reach you at the communion rail. And here in this church, we uh, fill the communion rail from my left to right. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. He offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. The tree of defeat became the tree of victory. Where life was lost, their life has been restored. Therefore, with angels and dark angels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. We pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. 
renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me, except I drink it, your will be done. Let us pray. God, our help and strength, through these holy mysteries confirm our faith, that by the death and resurrection of your Son, we may walk in the way of salvation. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit, to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you. Would you please make yourselves comfortable for some brief parish notices? I welcome all those who've gathered online across this city and indeed around the world and those who will drop into the service in the week ahead. Our prayers and best wishes for you wherever you may be as we enter this Easter season or Holy Week leading to Easter. To those who've gathered in this place, I look forward to sharing some hospitality with you all in a few minutes time uh, we've had some wonderful days this past week our artist in residence robert has returned to be with us this morning if you didn't visit him in the week don't let him escape uh, from morning tea uh, he loves to talk about his work and about life and he has been god's blessing on us this past week all the services for the week ahead are outlined in the Pew Bulletin and uh, I'm confident you'll respond to the invitation. But we return this afternoon at 5.30 for Jazz Vespers for Palm Sunday, led by Peter and his band. Uh, bring friends and neighbors. We might well change it up a little bit, uh, subject to a conversation over a cup of tea after this service and it would be wonderful to see everyone here. Uh, refreshments will be served this evening. During the course of the week, uh, 
we have Kristen returning to us on Wednesday. So those who are hanging out to catch up with Kristen, uh, she's had to divert somewhere else on the way here to respond to a military need, but uh, she's still confident she'll be with us by Wednesday morning. You heard me mention uh, a week or so ago um, that the Melbourne Anglican had moved online and I wondered how many people actually clicked on it to receive it, to read it. And lo and behold, we received a box of Melbourne Anglicans. So please uh, ensure you collect a Melbourne Anglican from Murren, who uh, has missed her job for the last few months, and they're available at the back of church. Please forgive me if I've omitted something of importance. Uh, which, where you're able, would you please stand for our blessing and dismissal. <clears throat> Christ our Saviour, draw you to himself, that you may find in him crucified a sure ground for faith firm support for hope and the assurance of sin forgiven and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to you.